Welcome to episode 23 of the Dark Horde Podcast. It's been about two weeks since I was on here because, um, I don't know, uh, one week <laughs> one week I fell asleep and uh, completely missed the whole podcast situation. And then I've also been working on trying to get somebody on here or to do the big psychic show on YouTube. And it's been up in the air. I haven't uh, been able to schedule either of those things, but uh, we're working on it. We're working for... Uh, for things to get a little bit exciting around here. But the podcast in itself went to a bi-weekly format. But we'll see, you know, if uh, new stories kind of uh, hit the ground running or we find more fascinating things than the paranormal to talk about, we definitely will pick it up. And, I mean, come on, Halloween's coming around the corner. It's time to get haunted, which um, turns out to be some of the problems we're going to talk about thanks to COVID-19. Yeah, I know, I know. You guys would love to be scared shitless. You probably had no idea that we'd be uh, worried about Halloween. It's true. It's true. It's very true. Now, the uh, the other reason I'm actually on live early, way earlier than normal, probably by about uh, two hours or so, is because at 10 p.m., the one and only, the norm, is going to have a live broadcast on YouTube from the Clown Hotel. Apparently the place is... <laughs> uh, it's an homage to clowns and is haunted. I mean, all of you people. I know there's a bunch of you out there that fucking hate clowns. Clowns are the scariest things on the planet. Yet they have a nice smile and a cute little laugh. But it scares the shit out of people. And uh, there's a place that you would go if you're not a fan of the Stephen King movie or book it well that's probably where you don't want to go i definitely stay the hell away from there uh no fucks are given there so yeah so that's what's happening so at 10 p.m the link is actually in the description you can go into uh the description right now it is the first link and uh please check it out i'm gonna be there you know if i don't fall asleep i plan to be there anyway that's the idea we'll see what happens I'm going to see uh, what's going to come down. So we have through... Uh, through. <laughs> the whiskey's kicking in. So we have three stories that we are going to talk about today, all dealing uh, in some way or another, well, except for the third one. The first two deal with how we are coping with the new norm when it comes to the paranormal and Halloween and being scared and missing it. Because for some people, it's a thrill to be scared around that time. And so we'll see... What's going to go down? Uh, what what are what are haunted places having to deal with? Now the cool thing is, as you guys know, if you are a uh, a usual listener to UFO Buster Radio and the Dark Horde, you know I like to play some music, and I've got three new tracks to play today. So hopefully you're in there. As a matter of fact, I'm looking at the live chat. We got Great Man, and we've got the Norm, the star of the uh, 10 p.m. Central show at the Clown Hotel. Um, he's already been posting pictures on Discord. So if you go into, uh, also within the uh, description, if you go into Discord right now, you can actually join the UFO Buster Radio fan group and see the pictures that Norm uh, has been putting up. And there is, uh, man, pictures of uh, tombstones and stuff like that. So it's going to be something else, I guarantee you. Something you guys will want to in- tune into, even... If you don't pick this show up till later on in the week, um, you can still go in there. It'll be pre-recorded. The link is there. Check it out. So let's get t- started with the first track for today, and uh, then we'll get into it. This goes out to anyone that likes to sleep with vampires. I was told it was urgent. Come see me tonight. In the sack we're flirting, and we dance. Kiss me 
Moonwalking. Ghostbusters! <laughs> This next story comes out of the uh, <laughs> every freaking haunted place you've ever wanted to visit. Every single haunted house, every place, even probably the uh, the clown motel, hotel, holiday inn. Even that place, I guarantee you, they may be having problems. You may be having COVID problems if you rely on jump scares. You may have COVID-19 paranormal problems if you need people to walk into your haunted house or stay at your haunted inn or anything of the sort. So it turns out that the uh, haunted houses of America are getting together and they're saying, hey, we we have employees. We have people that work for us. Yeah, the place is haunted and stuff like that, but people don't want to go anywhere. They don't want to be entertained in that manner because of coronavirus. Apparently, there is a group that are representing the haunted houses of the world, of America, not the world, of America, and they're lobbying Congress. It is a coalition, a coalition of haunted house operators. And they hired Hogan Lovells to convince Congress that they need to change the Paycheck Protection Program because they were left out of it. Yeah, the dreaded PPP. Which is crazy, right? You would think. Well, no, it's not crazy at all. People are just afraid. Uh, And it's been a long time. And the weird thing is, is that COVID-19 kind of started getting that that fire behind it, thanks to Wuhan. Uh, What? uh, Late in the uh, winter? And it kicked up in the spring, and it's still kicking our asses. But here's what's going to happen. Around now is when you see things starting to slowly take shape. You'll find places that uh, sell uh, haunted decorations, Halloween decorations, uh, things for you to get your stuff together. You see um, amusement parks putting together their attractions, putting out their commercials. But how can you? You've got to be six feet apart. You've got to wear a mask. Can you imagine walking into a amusement park or a, a haunted venue and everyone's wearing a mask? You can barely hear what the hell they're saying. Put the mask on. How can they tell you the story that happened in the 1800s when this one little guy killed like 30,000 people just for shit's sake? You're not going to know the place is haunted. You can't even hear the damn story. Well, anyway, they're getting together. They're lobbying to have the rules change for the Paycheck Protection Program in order to cover their employees. Here's what the main problem is. There's a rule within the uh, Paycheck Protection Program that allows a uh, seasonal employers, you know, bunny ears, folks that deal with Halloween, um, a 12-week pe- a 12-week period to uh, between May 1st, 2019 and September 15, 2019 when determining their maximum loan amount for which they're eligible. Well, shit, that was like right before Halloween. That was, that ended in September. So if you are a venue that deals with paranormal, you got a haunted-ass hotel with a bunch of crazy-ass fucking it clowns walking through it, most of the people went to see you during Halloween, during the month of October, probably in that last week. If you shall, if you have a damn pumpkin patch somewhere, 
that's probably when you also see most of your business. So why, in the name that all that is, uh, I don't know, that makes fucking sense, would they use that period from May to September of last year? It's uh, it's nuts. And I'm sure they're probably figuring shit, shit ran downhill, you know, after that. But really, we, we really didn't see, you know, people didn't take, uh, we're infected by the whole Wuhan thing. To a late, late in the winter, like around Decemberish, going into January. I mean, Halloween was already over. People did their stuff. They went to their places. They got their scares in. They got to record the disembodied spirits, and they were okay. There wasn't like a whole rule about staying six feet apart and not even talking to your neighbors because they're scary as fuck. Just the shit that's coming out of their mouth. Um, so that's the deal. That's what they're trying to do. They're trying to bring some relief because otherwise. What's going to happen to these guys? They might disappear forever. Your your clown hotels and your Yorktown hospitals and all your haunted places that uh, you hear about and you like to go visit might disappear because they are not going to be able to survive the uh, economic whiplash that they're about to feel uh, when it comes to this particular holiday season and the holiday of Halloween, which a lot of people take Halloween really damn seriously. I am not kidding, and you know who they are, and it's okay, but you enjoy, you have a good time, but your favorite place might be gone, sadly enough. Um, There's a quote in here from the folks that are out lobbying Congress to fix the uh, Payment Protection Program, or Paycheck Protection Program, um, and it says, I don't know if folks imagine the COVID-19 crisis would extend this long. Yeah, no shit. Nobody thought about it. Nobody even thought that something like Halloween. And then you roll past, and let's think about this. You roll past Halloween. What if, you know, COVID-19 sparks up and takes out Thanksgiving and Christmas? <laughs> All the fucking holidays are gone. That that really would put 2020 in the shitter, I guarantee you. Uh, but the lobbyists are pushing forward. They're trying to get this done and trying to get an extension to the uh, Pension Protection Program so that it can include the business that uh, was uh, fruitful for these guys uh, last year. So at least extend it through October. And really, they need to go past that, to be honest. That was a really short time frame that they included in the payment protection, that fucking payment, the Paycheck Protection Program. Uh, And it really was... uh, You know, we can't really blame them for that. It was a real... Something they just had to do. Spur the moment. They just put some fucking dates together and uh, didn't think about the big picture. But that's just the way it is when you have an emergency response. But because of that, they should be able to save your local haunted house from probably after the season closing permanently. And that would be uh, pretty sad for a lot of folks. I guarantee you that. So, more to come on that. We'll see how, they, if they'll be able to turn that around. Nobody knows. Nobody knows. I got another, another new track for you. Check this out. This one's, uh, I'm a monster. Oh, 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 
newsflash. Uh, the norm says that also the babe will be there with him. So it's going to be a tag team duo on the clowns. We'll see who survives. <laughs> So the next story has to do with folks that are looking at the new Paranorm. So on the other side of things, the regular every life thing, you have the new norm, you know, the COVID norm. And on the uh, paranormal side, you have the new Paranorm. And so there are places, of course, who are ingenious because they're big corporations. They, they have tons of money to turn this shit around and face the COVID-19 Paranorm. The new one. So basically, it turns out, hey, there's a story going on on Fox News related to the uh, haunted drive throughs that are going on. Uh, and they're going to keep the season alive for 2020. And a lot of the places are pretty familiar to you. But you got rules, right? You got COVID-19 rules that doesn't allow you to have a bunch of actors coming up to you to scare you. You don't have people that can get that close to you. Now, most of the time, they can't touch you anyway. But uh, it's kind of difficult, kind of complicated to jump scare someone or to put the fear of the haunting in someone when you're six feet away from them. So what they've done is that they've created a drive through haunted houses. Yeah, and even in Orlando, where we know that there are tons of venues out there that love this particular holiday, and people love visiting it and uh, spending all their money. Uh, these guys are putting together drive through haunted houses and uh, get ready for it. Now, the weird thing is, and I'm not... Uh, I This part doesn't make any sense to me. Just like people who drive with their mask on makes no fucking sense to me at all. But um, these guys who are going to be actors in these drive through haunted houses are going to stay six feet away from the cars. <laughs> Can you, can you imagine if your car contracts coronavirus? Wouldn't that be shitty? How would you explain that to your mechanic that your, your your car has a breathing problem? I don't know. But get ready for it. So a lot of these people are getting together and they are going to put together a drive through haunted house. There's a quote in here that's coming from Otilio Jamerson. He's the uh, entertainment director of Urban Legends in Southern California. That goes out to Green Man. He says, imagine your car pulling up into a dark alley, turning off your engine, and being just completely powerless as you're surrounded by creatures. Not sure. You know, I'm having a hard time even thinking that's going to be scary. But yeah, I mean, you never know. A lot of the movies that you watch that have to do with the haunted situation, some dumbass ends up in a car anyway and still dies. So it might be a thing. This might actually work. You take your whole family, you plow them into your Corolla, all 15 of you, and you drive into a haunted place and see what the hell happens. I would guarantee you, even if one of them cracks a fart, that'd be scary enough for everyone. Like, I would not get into a car with Bugs the UFO Hunter. Not for that amount of time with that many people. Um, yeah. It'd be uh, detrimental to all of us. I guarantee you. Uh, he continued to say that as far as the actors go, it would be a lot more fun for them because they will have more freedom and, in the choices they make when they're doing their movements, you know, their funky little scary dances. And um, it's also an opportunity to learn new ways to scare that aren't just, uh, as, you know, they go away from just popping in your face. So they're going to incorporate a lot of props, lighting, music, and uh, yeah, they're just trying everything they can to make sure that they're able to do this in a really creative way and because it's, uh, it's something they've never done before. Now, hey, listen, it's a good thing that uh, we're trying to keep hope alive, but again, how does that help the little haunted house? The, uh, the little places that you've gone to that uh, has been a tradition in many families to go to the local mom-and-pop haunted house yeah, uh, you know, in a little suburbia. Things are going to change. COVID-19 and Wuhan have... Uh, I think the people in China don't like Halloween. Or 
Thanksgiving or Christmas. I, I think that's why they let this damn virus loose on the world because they're uh, they're shutting things down. Okay, they really have. No kidding. So we'll see how this works out. So we have people in in Orlando, like Universal Studios, is going to be doing things like this. Uh, folks out in California. Uh, and I'm sure it's going to be. Yeah, like every damn Six Flags is probably going to do the same thing because they got some big-ass parking lots. And so I guarantee they, uh, instead of keeping them empty, they're pretty sure a lot of these places, are, especially the bigger venues, are going to have some uh, drive through uh, Halloween situations going on. And... Hopefully it works, because uh, you would hate to have, you know, these type of places, which historically a lot of people go to, even outside of the holidays, to close down because of the madness that's going on. As a matter of fact, we were just looking for movies today to watch, and we were sitting there looking at the uh, TV, and it's like, where was all the new movies? Like, the new, there's no summer blockbuster this year. That went to hell in the handbasket. A lot of the uh, movie companies pushed that down to next year. But what if COVID-19 is still around then? What the fuck are they going to do? Give us the movies now, especially the scary ones. We're ready for them. I want to take a quick look at the live chat that's going on right now on Spreaker. If you're listening, that's the place to catch it live. We got Chuck Bam. We got Guter. And, of course, you know, we got Green Man. Game Ed also showed up. Uh, the, the gang's here. Everybody's getting together. I thought I'd trick them today and see who would actually make it. Uh, but you guys are here. Totally. Support your local haunted house and do like the Norman, the babe, and go and visit them, just like we did. I actually went to, you guys don't even know this, but I went to the Yorktown Hospital twice already, and I plan to go a third time. Eventually, I'm going to get touched by a ghost. I'm going to force it. I'm going to make it happen. With all 17, it's going to go down, and maybe I can get them to join my my biker gang, the uh, probe angels. Eh, we'll see what happens. One more track, and then we'll close this baby down. It's a rainy night, coming laid out of the dojo. No lights, dark out on the parking lot. Looking for my car, thought I left it here before. Got a feeling that something ain't right. Shadows, hear the sound of two feet See my car with my keys, kinda getting spooky Oh God, now it's coming from behind My cell is gone dead as I slowly turn around and oh, oh. Suddenly my brain's letting go and I laugh out loud As my elbows crash into an eyebrow Thinking what the hell I'm gonna make it somehow Run into a closed liquor store, break the window Grab a bottle of gin, take a swig, oh no Stepping on a slimy lump and no
Try to talk to Big O. Most of you who listen to this podcast here don't know Big O, but uh, try to get him to join the Probe Angels. Uh, he turned down the uh, the invite, but I said I'll get him an application in the mail. He's just got to watch out because the initiation uh, it could be a little rough if you know what I'm saying. This last article has to do with Bigfoot. If you look at the uh, logo that was used for this particular episode of the Dark Horse Podcast, number 23, Bigfoot again, is leaving his mark, or her mark, in uh, Utah, Logan, Utah, Matthew Wentz. Apparently, he's a believer, um, and he does have some uh, little, uh, a little bit of skepticism, and it's good. you got to have a balance. You can't go all hog wild because people think you're a nutbag, and then you can't be completely a dork and be completely skeptical because then people think you're an asshole. I'm just saying, you've got to have balance. And apparently, uh, Matthew Wentz has balance. Because last month, over at the uh, Bear River Range, he found the customary gigantic footprint in the Deutz. Yeah, in the Deutz. And, uh, of course, they think that it might have been, well, at least uh, Matthew thinks, it is something that looks like could have been left by Bigfoot, Sasquatch, you know, the big guy, the hairy guy. That's where he's at. He apparently loves the outdoors, and he was out doing his thing. He likes to hike. He likes to hunt. He likes to fly fish, which actually I saw a few. I've never really seen fly fishing live till I went to Colorado a few years ago. And, man, these freaking fly fish. I thought people that fished in the Gulf were serious about fishing. Fly fishermen, they make it into almost like an art form. It's uh, pretty nice to look at, but that's all I did. I just stared awkwardly. Um, he says that uh, he pretty much he tries to stay um, around uh, Cache Valley uh, for two to three times a week. He likes to go in there and, and do his thing. He's a 34-year-old Valley native, and he's had some uh, fascinating experiences while he's been out there. You know, you've got to be out there enough. But here's the thing when it comes to UFO aliens, when it comes to cryptids like Bigfoot, the Chupacabra, and uh, all these other guys. If you're not out there, you're never going to see shit. That's the truth. If you want to find Bigfoot, you go to where the fuck Bigfoot's at. That's the downside with aliens and E.T. Because <laughs> you can't really go where they're supposed to be at unless you have a pretty nice fucking drone that you steal from the Soviets or you, or you buy it in the black market from Wuhan, China. But anyway... Simplest thing, right? If you want to figure out where the hell Bigfoot is at, what Bigfoot's about, where does he run around, you go into the damn woods. That's that. You got to go where he's at. He's not going to show up one day in the middle of Central Park just chilling out. Funny if he does that next week. But he's not going to be in your metropolitan areas. Bigfoot, 
He likes to be in the woods. Go to the damn woods like uh, Matthew Wentz did. Stay out there. He says, uh, there's a quote from uh, Matthew here that says, Most people think Sasquatch or Bigfoot is a joke. Wentz said, in a res- uh, that was a recent interview he did with the Herald Journal. He says, I have multiple friends that are older than me that have seen stuff around here. They are credible, but don't really talk about it. You know, someone that has seen something and it scares them, they don't really want to talk about it or be ridiculed. A lot of people don't realize something this like this could exist. Michael, uh, Matthew Wentz, he, he's a believer. He, I mean, he really is. Probably more now than ever that he saw a big-ass footprint in the mud. Now he's a really believer. Now he knows. But he's already seen stuff. And you're not going to... You can't be a cryptid enthusiast and not take the opportunity to go out to the woods and find the stuff yourself. And I'm going to tell you right now, it could be scary as shit, I'm sure, to be out there in the complete darkness of the night. Because there's no street lights, there's no ambient lighting. You're just going to have your damn fire that's going off. Or if you like the luxury way of doing it, you might <laughs> take a generator or some shit like that. It has some lights and some batteries. But you're basically out in the dark. There's like no light around you. You can't see a damn thing. But that's how you're going to find out if these cryptids are real, like Bigfoot. I'll be honest. You've got to do it. He also went on to say, I'm definitely skeptical of stuff like this. I really believe there is something tall being, a uh, tall being, is some tall being out there, uh, but I have no idea what it is. It's hard to believe that uh, large Bigfoots like creatures would be around here because there are so many people and more going into the mountains these days compared to about 30 to 40 years ago. People used to see stuff all the time. And he continues to say hey, a lot of people can't comprehend it and don't even want to acknowledge it. I believe here in my whole life I've gone out a lot. So I realize the possibilities of potential animals living in places you wouldn't expect them uh, are pretty high. There's a lot of room in the mountains. When you go out during the day, you usually don't see a lot of animals, and they are usually pretty shy um, because a lot of them are nocturnal. Maybe Bigfoot is nocturnal himself. I don't know. Now, the funny thing is I really have never given any idea or really thought to Bigfoot. I'm, I'm not really into the cryptids. But it is funny that this is another situation where we've seen many hoaxes when it comes to the Bigfoot story. But yet they continue. We've seen a lot of people misidentifying Bigfoot. There was a story a few months ago where a uh, traffic cam caught what people thought was a Bigfoot. And it wasn't. It was actually the way the light fell across some trees after snow. It looked like Bigfoot was walking by. But there are sightings of Bigfoot that happen all the time. And a lot of times we find these remnants like uh, fur. Or we find, you know, things like footprints which are extremely large. That's Bugs the UFO Hunter. He likes cryptids as well. He might become one one day if he keeps having all the gas that he does. But like I said, I've never really had an opinion of it because I really never really studied uh, the whole Bigfoot, Sasquatch, uh, Abominable Snowman, none of that. I really haven't gotten into it. But I actually uh, recently, uh, part of the As Guardians, uh, some of the guys on here, sent out a request to a uh, alleged Bigfoot expert who's on TV. And uh, they really haven't responded. I said, hey, we would love to hear about Bigfoot and cryptids. Oh my can help us understand how do we get to know these things. But the truth is that the best way to do it is like I said, like they used to do ufology back in the day. Ufology, people who studied UFOs back in the day used to go camp out. They would camp out at the site of the incident and stay there overnight in tents trying to see if they can catch or a return event, a secondary event happened. Same thing with Bigfoot. You got to get out there. You got to be in it to win it. You have to be willing to investigate it. 
But there's just a lot of people who just aren't willing to do that these days, unfortunately. But the technology is on their side because you can set up cameras now that are uh, remotely set up where you can record things all night and maybe even catch Bigfoot that way. wonder why there isn't such a big rush, uh, big push to use technology to finally track Bigfoot down. This is the end of uh, Dark Horde number 23. Don't forget to check out the one and only The Norm and now The Babe at the Clown Hotel. It's going to be quite a scare. It'll be live on YouTube. The link is in the description. Feel free to visit. We might even make a visit and see what's going down. I want to see some crazy-ass clowns, don't you? Ciao, until next time. My man who Rigger checking out. I'll catch you guys on the next episode. Hopefully it'll be on YouTube. I'm still planning it. We'll see. Thank <laughs> you.